Hello, hello. Today we are going to be talking about where to start when it comes to being frugal and trying to save money. I am Christine. I am the blogger behind Mostly Simple Life and I love talking about frugal living and saving money because for many, many years, my husband Austin and I did not have a choice. <laughs> for about five years, maybe more, our budget monthly was around $1,500 or less. Uh, occasionally we made more than that, but that's what we budgeted for monthly. And for the most part, we just didn't have a choice about being frugal because we wouldn't have lived. <laughs> we would have gone into so much debt and we didn't have money to make payments on debt. So um, living frugally was incredibly important to us. And that's why I love talking about it. So whether you are saving for a vacation or trying to come up with a house down payment or you're paying off debt or you're just living on a very low income and need to be extra frugal just to be able to pay your bills. I have been in all of those shoes. Um, so that's why I love talking about it. I want to get into that. So first off, if you can see me and hear me, can you click the thumbs up button just so that I know that we are working and I don't keep talking if it's not working. Um, and yeah, I, I would love to know where you're from as well. So if you are listening, even if you're listening to the replay, let me know where you're from because I know I have readers. Oh, thank you for hitting the thumbs up. Perfect. Um, I know I have readers from all over the world and I love knowing where you're from. I am in West Michigan in the United States and I live about 45 minutes from Lake Michigan which is uh, a very, very large lake. No, you can't see across it. That's always everyone's number one question. <laughs> uh, it's very, very large. I don't know how many miles across it is, but you have to have like a yacht to make it across. So it's kind of a mini ocean. <laughs> but yeah, so let's get into where to start when it comes to frugal living. And let me just say, if you are watching the replay of this, if you have any questions, Feel free to write them in the comments. I always check back in with the comments, so I will try and answer them. So the first thing is I want to encourage you to start small. And I know that if you are in this stressful position of feeling like you have to save money, you have to lower your expenses, obviously you want to take big steps where you can. And if you can cut things out completely, we'll get to that. I'll make some suggestions in a minute on what you can just cut. But... Changing how you spend your money is changing your habits, right? Your, the way you spend is just a habit, and there's a lot of times you probably don't even think about it. You know, if you're in the habit of hitting the McDonald's drive through for breakfast five mornings a week, you probably don't even think about it, right? That's just what you do. So changing how you spend money is really about changing your habits, and that's hard, right? So I don't want to discourage you from trying. Of course, we are going to get into practical things you can do. But let me just tell you to give yourself some grace. Changing habits is hard. Changing habits takes time. And you can make amazing progress if you don't give up. So it's hard. You are going to take baby steps. Be okay with baby steps because a thousand baby steps will get you very, very far. Don't give up. You know, it's going to take a while to figure out budgeting. I've been budgeting for eight years, and I still come into months where I feel like it's a whole failure, right? <laughs> like things did not go as planned. But you keep going, right? You, you allow yourself to mess up, allow yourself to fall back into bad habits or old, more higher spending habits, and keep making the effort anyways, okay? So if you are used to going out to dinner every single night after work. You're not used to cooking at home at all. Trying to change to cooking from home every single night and making everything from scratch, that is a huge change. I mean, that takes planning, shopping, time, energy, all of which you are not used to. So make things easy on yourself. Start small. Buy a rotisserie chicken on your way home and eat that at home with like a packet of the mashed potatoes that you just add hot water to, right? Make it easy. Start small. Don't try and cut your grocery budget in half immediately. Look for little things you can do. Stop buying, you know, the name brand and see where you can switch to the store brand. Little things because if you try and change really big things all at once, it might stick for a week or two and then you might just like 
be like, I've had it. I can't deal with this. This is really hard. So give yourself some grace. Be okay with starting small. When it doesn't work, and there will be days it doesn't work, don't give up. It's okay to mess up. Just keep going. <laughs> okay? So that's my encouragement to start small and just keep going. All right? Now, number two of how to get started is you need to know where your money's going. How are you going to save money and change your spending if you don't know how you're spending it, right? So look at your uh, credit card statement. You can pull it online if it doesn't come in the mail. Make notes of where you are spending money and do not, do not discount the little, um, the little amounts because $8 here and there can add up to hundreds of dollars over the month, okay? So don't ignore the little things because most likely the little things are where your money leaks are. And you're like, oh, it's just $5, no big deal. Well, $5 every single day is what, like $300 or no, $150 a month? That's not super small, right? That's significant. So look at your statements. Look at, you know, if you're buying gas station snacks, if you are buying alcohol, to have beer or wine at home every week. Um, obviously, having it at home is a lot cheaper than going out and having alcohol. But look at that. You know, can you cut back? Look at your online shopping. Uh, look at your work lunches. Y'all, I used to work at a place where most people went out to lunch every single day during the work week. That is like a minimum of eight to ten dollars every day. And then these people can be so oblivious. They would complain and be like, I have no money, or be like, I'm in a really tough financial situation. Well, you're spending $40 to $50 minimum per week going out to lunch just for work. So do not discount those small amounts. Those small amounts add up. Look at your statements, figure out where your money leaks are, and then get on a budget. Budgeting is a good thing. Budgeting is not a restrictive thing. It's just deciding how you're going to spend. If you decide that you're going to spend $500 on shoes every month and you can afford that, that's fine. You know, it's just making a plan. Your plan can be whatever you want the plan to be. Um, and it doesn't have to be restrictive. You, If you can afford to eat out um, every night and that's what you want to do and that's how you want to spend your money, that's fine. But what you want to do is have a plan. You want to know where your money is going so that you can do things on purpose, right? So find out where your money is going and look for the leaks. Look for all those little expenses that add up. And now we can get into what you can cut. And there are some things that you can completely cut out, completely. And things like cable, I know that's like everyone's go-to thing. Do people even have cable anymore? I feel like it's been suggested like so often for so many years that to cut cable. So I'm not even sure who has cable anymore. <laughs> but um, You know, there's Hulu, there's the PlayStation View, there's other streaming services. You know that. If you are looking into being frugal, that's everyone's number one place to start. And it does help. We spend like $12 on Hulu and we have Amazon Prime. So for, I don't know. $30 or something. I don't know what it is per month, but it's not much and we have plenty of TV to watch. We never don't have something to watch. Uh, look at your Sam's Club, Costco, those store memberships and see if they are truly saving you money. We are about to let our Sam's Club membership go because we were using it to get an expensive prescriptions, which it was worth it for that. Um, but our insurance changed, so we don't need to get prescriptions from Sam's Club anymore. And I like Sam's Club. I like going there. I like watching what people buy in bulk. I find that fascinating. <laughs> um, I like the salmon burger patties that I can't find anywhere else. However, it is not worth it for us to pay either $50 or $100 per year. We're not saving that much money. We're going to let the membership go. You know, there are some things that you're like, oh, this is probably really worth it, but it's not always. And unless you have a huge family and you buy most of your groceries there and you need to buy things in bulk, it very well might not be worth it for you to have those store memberships. Um, oh, I see we've got a couple other people watching. I wanted to just say, if you will leave me a comment of where you're from, I want to know where you're from. <laughs> um, okay, other things we can cut completely. Zoo memberships, museum memberships, pool memberships, any kind of membership. Those are up for grabs. 
If you are using them, that is great. You might still be able to cut them if you are trying to be really frugal, though. Or cut back to just one. Do you need to have, be a yearly member to the zoo and the museum and the this and the that and that? Maybe just one. Or really look, do you actually go enough to make it worth it? Or look for free options. There are free things to do. There's free around here. There's always like a day where you can go to the museum for free or go to the zoo for free. Um, so you don't, even if you do use those memberships, maybe you can cut those out. Uh, gas station treats. Do not buy soda and treats from the gas station, y'all. It is so much more expensive than anywhere else. And I have literally seen people's uh, budgets that when they add up their expenses, they are dropping hundreds of dollars per month on gas station crap. So <laughs> if you want to buy sodas, buy them at the grocery store and take a can with you to work. It is better than spending like $1.50 to get one can of soda, right? So it's unnecessary. Uh, monthly subscriptions, magazines, anything is up for grabs. These things you can cut out completely and probably not notice it that much, right? If your magazine doesn't come in the mail, are you really going to notice? Maybe you don't need that subscription, right? All right. Now, the next thing of where to start for being frugal is to eat at home. And this is a big one. So I. I know people who have, it's not uncommon for them to spend like a thousand dollars a month eating out because they're going out for dinner, not as a treat, not as something fun to do, or not even as like a weekly Friday night thing. It is like every single meal. They don't eat dinner at home ever. That is a lot of money. Even if you are eating out for dinner a couple nights a week, even if you're doing the dollar menu at McDonald's, it is adding up. So but remember, we talked about not making too big of changes, right? So how do we start small? The first thing I would say is to plan a couple of meals and go to the grocery store on like a weekend or day off and buy food to make two dinners at home. That's where you can start. Two dinners at home and make it easy. Do not go on Pinterest and pick out whichever recipe looks amazing because those are gonna take all kinds of ingredients you don't have because you're not used to cooking at home. You probably don't have that stuff in the house. It is going to take time and energy and brain power. Make it easy on yourself, okay? You can buy the rotisserie chicken. You can buy bags of pre-cooked chicken. All of these convenience things, yes, are more expensive than if you're cooking from scratch. But if your alternative, isn't cooking from scratch. Your alternative is going out to eat, which means that the convenience foods are a lot cheaper, right? So make it small. Start with just making wraps or quesadillas at home or buying the rotisserie chicken and just eating chicken and mashed potatoes. Make it easy on yourself and go up from there, right? The more you can eat at home, the better it'll be, but start small. Don't expect yourself to be making fresh baked bread and everything from scratch. You don't, you don't have time or energy for that right now. Maybe eventually you'll get into it. That would be great, but start small. The next is to look, so if you are like at work and you hit the vending machine often uh, for like your afternoon snack and every afternoon you're hitting the vending machine for like a can of soda and a granola bar or packet of cookies or whatever it is, um, Try and buy those things at the grocery store and bring them to work. You are, every afternoon you're hungry. Let's just accept that. You want an afternoon snack every afternoon. Well, let's accept that. That's going to happen. You're going to want your afternoon snack. Well, if you buy a box of granola bars and a pack of soda and bring those from work every day, that's going to be cheaper than hitting the vending machine because they charge way too much at the vending machine, right? That is a small change. You're still eating exactly the same, you're still, but you're saving money and all you're doing is bringing it from home instead of buying it at work. Small change, but is going to be saving you money. So gradually, you know, you'll find more and more ways to eat at home, but let yourself start small, plan two dinners, um, bring snacks, buy the box of granola bars, buy a pack of soda at home if you're doing those things anyways, right? All right, and the last thing is to have fun being frugal. <laughs> um, I have to say, frugal, being frugal gets a bad rap, and that's because 
in essence, people think that you're sitting at home staring at a wall. If you are having fun, it doesn't matter that you're being frugal, right? It's not hard to be frugal if you're having fun. So, so have fun. Have Find ways to have fun. And I like to have kind of a list of ideas of fun things to do because you'll resort to your usual more expensive ideas if you don't have ideas. So if you are used to going out with friends on a weekend, great option is to invite people over. If Austin and I go out to a brewery, we are spending $30 minimum, minimum. If we had people over, for $30, I could like make dinner for a whole lot of people, or we could order pizzas and buy drinks for everyone, or have people bring that stuff. People always bring drinks and stuff if they come over. So invite people over. It is always less expensive. Have a friend over for coffee instead of spending $5 on your coffee going out. Uh, have like a potluck. Everyone brings stuff. Have a, gr you know, grill out and do just do hot dogs and have people bring fruit or other things. You can be social and it is always less expensive to have people over than to go out. Just invite people over. Uh, look for free activities because they exist pretty much everywhere. Do a Google search, and what you do is whatever city you live in, I live near Grand Rapids, so I would type in free activities in Grand Rapids, and that's it, and things will come up. Oh my goodness, things will come up. There is stuff for adults, for kids, for families, for pets probably, there's dog events, you know, all kinds of things. So look for free events, they do exist, a lot of them. Use what you have is another one because you have board games, you have camping gear, you have yard games, you have bikes and rollerblades and video games. And those you do have, you know, if you have a membership to a zoo or a museum or pool that hasn't expired yet, or we talked about not renewing it, but if it's still active, go and use that thing, right? When we lived at an apartment a couple winters ago, we chose an apartment that had an indoor pool because winter is rough in Michigan, y'all. So <laughs> we chose an apartment that had an indoor pool because we knew we'd only be there for the winter and we wanted to go swimming. And let me tell you, every time we went to this indoor pool, this, I mean, this apartment complex was big. There was probably a thousand people, maybe more, in this apartment complex. And we almost always had the pool and the hot tub, both indoors, to ourselves. People didn't use it. And it was insane. You were paying, I mean, you were obviously paying for it because the rent on those apartments was a little more than other places. So you were paying to have this thing available to you. And people didn't use it. We almost always had the pool to ourselves. So you have things in, you know, you have fun, fun things that you have access to. You have neighbors that have a pool that would love to have you over, you, you know. Anything like that, use the things you have. You have so much fun stuff at your fingertips. It's just not as new, so you might not think about it, right? And, okay, my last thing about frugal fun is to bring your own drinks and food when possible because a free activity quickly turns not free when someone gets hungry or thirsty. And for Austin and I, we're just like, it's, it's not, I can't have fun if I'm hungry. <laughs> So, so if we're out at a free event and like having fun and then I get hungry, I need food. I mean, I'm not even going to have fun if I don't, if I'm hungry. So we try and like, you know, bring our own snacks, make sure we always have water bottles with us, uh, those kinds of things. Bring your own food and drinks. Make sure you're not resorting to buying a $3 bottle of water when you're out at this free event, right? So that is all for today. If you have any questions, I would love for you to ask them. Uh, we went through where to start, start small, start small, allow yourself grace, um, you know, keep making the effort anyway, even if you mess up, even if you feel like you failed, you didn't, just keep going, keep trying. Um, changing your spending is changing your habits, and that can be hard. You need to figure out where your money is going, find those money leaks, figure out what those are so you can try and stop them, and then work on getting on a budget. Cut out the things that you just don't need at all. You can, you know, can you cut out the Sam's Club membership, the Zoo membership, buying treats at a gas station? There are probably things in your budget that you can just cut. And it might be hard at first, but you'll get used to it quickly. 
eat at home, start small with, you know, the rotisserie chicken, the pre-cooked chicken, the frozen pizza even. All those convenience things are cheaper than going out. So get yourself used to eating at home and you'll gradually figure out maybe a little more complicated meals or from scratch here and there if you've got the energy and the time. But don't expect yourself to be like cooking these things that all the fancy food bloggers cook, um, you know, right off the bat. That's probably not going to work. And figure out ways to have fun. You do not mind being frugal if you are having fun. So invite people over, find the free activities, use the things that you already have that are fun, and don't forget to bring your own food and drinks when you're out somewhere so that you don't have to stop and get the more expensive stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all later. <laughs>